thank you everybody for coming tonight, tonight to celebrate the World Oceans Day. Uh, and I will explain you a, a, a bit about what means this day. But first, uh, I want to tell you what means an interactive webinar, because tonight we have a different methodology as a normal webinar. Normally when we have a webinar, it is a one person that the speaker that is speaking and the other people are just uh, watching the, the video, but this time will be a little different. The idea is that uh, we will ask you to give your opinion on both some simple questions. Uh, and we will try to have some kind of conversation during the presentation. Uh, the purpose uh, of uh, this interactive activity is to con first to contextualize the following slides, oh, the idea that oh, you can oh, understand better the slide, and also share your thoughts about the, the topic that we were, we were speaking about. Okay, then uh, the, for starting, uh, it's very important that you have, if you are in your computer, it would be great. And uh, also, the idea you can. Uh, use your your phone. It's not easy with this, uh, but your phone, <laughs> your phone and your computer at the same time will be the best way to do it. Uh, how can we do it? Here we have the instructions. Uh, the idea that we go to this uh, to this address uh, that is menti.com, and we will introduce this code, and then. Just the idea that we can go together, go to uh, menti.com and uh, we will enter the code 5514-5514-4798 and submit. When you are in, uh, into the website, please thumbs up with the idea that we know that you are now in Menti. Again, the instructions are go to menti.com and uh, introduce the code 5514-4798. Now we have three, three people, but we are 15, 15 in this moment then. It, it, we would like to have at least six or seven uh, thumbs up to know that you are uh, in into the Mentimeter, the, the, to the Menti, because this is very important for us in the, the way that we can uh, we can speak and we can interact. Then please go to another, to uh, the browser and open the web page menti.com. Uh, please the, include the code 5514-4798. Uh, please thumb up with the idea that we know that you are uh, inside. Now we are four. But why uh, these are these instructions? Okay, we have five. Great, I think. Now you are entering perfectly. And it's, we will start with the same, with the first exercise. This is the icebreak. Uh, this will be in your phone, <clears throat> and in Menti, will be this question. From where are you connected today? Then please, you will uh, choose the, the the place in where you are, you have different options, Halifax Metro, Eastern Shore, South hey, Shore, Valley Valley, not Umberland Shore, Cape Breton, Yarmouth, Acadian Shore, or maybe you are in another Atlantic province or in other province of Canada, or maybe abroad. Where are you? And now we are receiving the votes, six votes we have now, three in Halifax Metro, one in Cape Breton, it looks like you, Cass, <laughs> and two more in the other province of Canada. Okay. If somebody more is interested to, to vote, remember the instructions, exactly the same. You can see also the the, the code. If you have any questions, you can write in the, the chat. Camilo, can you tell me what the numbers were again for Marion to enter into? Yeah. 5514. Okay, give me a second. I will keep put again here on the instruction 5514-4798. I think maybe we can include the code in the chat. 
Great. Thank you, Gus. Okay. Now we have six. Maybe we will wait a second just to. Remember the code is on the chat also. We go to menti.com and the code 5514-4798. Okay, let's start now. It, we will use exactly the same code during the whole presentation. Then if you entry later or finally you can't, uh, and through the code, uh, you can, it will be exactly the same, the same uh, number, same code. But okay. First, a question for you. Did you know before this event about the celebration of the World Ocean Day? You have four options in your phone and it will be that uh, yes, and I participate in past editions, Yes, but this is my first time, I'm not sure, or not is the first time I'm part of the celebration. You know, five boats, totally we are seven connected to Mentimeter, maybe more. Mm. Okay, many newcomers to the celebration. This is great, this is great. I'm very happy, I'm very honored that I will be your Host in your first World Ocean Day celebration. What is the World Ocean Day? Okay, this is a general term, the, briefly the story about the World Ocean Day. Uh, the first time that uh, what was the declaration of the Ocean's Day was uh, in, in Rio de Janeiro in 1992, when it was the, uh, I think all of us we should know about this very, very important uh, a very important conference that was the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, it was a site event and this uh, was a proposal from, uh, the, from Canada, from the Oceans Institute of Canada, uh, supported by the Canadian government to propose an Oceans Day uh, at the Global Forum. This Global Forum was a site event of the, of the conference then uh, Canada was the, the, the country that had the, the idea to have an ocean day. However, uh, it spent was the, during 16, 16 years, uh, was the proposal that the United Nation designate officially the uh, 8th of June as the World Ocean Day. And finally, uh, in 2008, and also led by the Canadian uh, government, the General Assembly of the United Nation declared the uh, 8th June of the World Oceans Day. And since this year, we are celebrating every year in the same uh, date, the World Oceans Day. In 2009 was the first United Nations World Oceans Day observer. Uh, later in the uh, 2017 was the United Nations Ocean Conference and World Ocean Day together. This is an event in New York. Uh, also in 2020 was the first beer per United Nation World Oceans Day event because we were in the, on the, just in the middle of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. And that year was the first hybrid United Nation World Ocean Day event. It means that it was, the, was in person and also virtual. And this year, uh, we are celebrating a photo competition for the United Nation World Ocean Day. It means that uh, from now, we are uh, more than 30 years uh, celebrating the World Oceans Day. Uh, but why is important to celebrate the World Ocean Day? Because we, more than the planet Earth, which we call the planet ocean, because 70% of the uh, surface of the, of the planet is covered by, by the oceans. But I want to, to ask you because this interactive activity is, is better when you are participating in your opinion, which could be the core topic of the United Nation Ocean Decade. The United Nation Ocean Decade I will show you is uh, that during the whole decade, this decade, we are again. trying to, uh, to know more about no. the, the oceans. But to no. know more about the oceans, 
uh, we need that uh, all the all the uh, scientists uh, study more the oceans. Then please go to your phone. It's exactly the same instruction that you go to your phone and, and you uh, you should be in, inside. And please choose three options. Three options about which could be the, the most important topics that United Nations should uh, highlight about the oceans. We have many options, ecosystem and biodiversity, pollution, transport and navigation, uh, culture and communities, climate change and risk, tourism and recreation, fisheries and aquaculture, energy and marine minerals, science and education, um, peace and global, global justice. Choose three of them and um, please send yeah, that, that submitted your, your answer. And we can see on the screen the results. Oh, majority, we have 24 uh, votes. And until now, it means eight a person that uh, we have already voted. And majority of the votes are in ecosystem and biodiversity. Yeah, that is very important. But also we have with the same numbers, really, really uh, balanced pollution, climate change, fisheries, and science. Uh, with no boats, transport and navigation, and tourism and recreation, that is surprising, at least for me. Uh, but OK, we can see now what exactly is the United Nation Ocean Decay. So this is a very important. During these 10 years, from 2021 to 2013, 2030, we will be celebrating the ocean decade. What is the idea? Which is the vision? That the science we need for the ocean we want. Uh, I'm very proud to, to be part of uh, living now in Nova Scotia because we are surrounded by the ocean, surrounded by coast. Uh, and which is the ocean we want? For that is the this ocean decade which has the mission to be to transformative ocean science solutions for sustainable development connecting people and our ocean. This is the mission. And uh, this ocean decade has seven outcomes. That means we want an, uh, a clean ocean. We want a healthy and resilient ocean. We want a productive ocean. We want a predicted ocean, a safe ocean, an accessible ocean, an inspiring and engaging ocean. It means that the ocean decade is not just about the, the conflicts, but also it's about how can we include the, how we can include the, all, all the different perspectives about the ocean, the people, the ecosystem, the transport, the tourism and the fisheries, everything, because the ocean is more than just water, just salt water, a lot, a lot more. If you're interested to know more about the ocean decade, uh, you can see there the web page is very easy, just yes, the oceandecade.org, and you will find the 10 uh, ocean decade challenge for a collective impact. Because the idea uh, with uh, with this ocean decade is that we can uh, collaborate this collective impact. Because when we are working together, we have we have the opportunity to be, to have more impact than if we are uh, working alone, we are working isolated. And this is a big part of our uh, activity today. I just, uh, okay, uh, let's go. What words come to your mind when you think about beaches? And this is another activity. Uh, please only one word at a time. But when you are when you uh, are thinking about beaches, or about the beach, which words comes to your mind? Imagine, please write your your words uh, in in your phone, and it will be on the screen. Remember that you can participate if you go to menti.com and you include the code that is in, is in the chat. Okay, we'll start receiving the answers. 
peeping plover, very important, very important species. It's an endangered species, the coast, the ocean coast conservation, biodiversity connection. Sun, also sun, home, oh, interesting. Very interesting because it's not only about the, the ecosystem. And we can see here, all of us, we have different words in our mind about beaches. It's not that everybody is thinking the same about the beach. And this is very important. If we have some word that is the same, the same word, for example, vacation, now at least two uh, person vote for vacation. This is why it's, it's bigger, the, this word. Relaxing, rest, calm. Then if there, uh, we can see here the the beach is is more than just sand and water. Beaches are all of this world and many more worlds. But if we have some idea about beaches, how many beaches do you know in Nova Scotia? Just in Nova Scotia. Not everybody's living uh, now in Nova Scotia, but how many beaches do you think that you know in Nova Scotia? Okay, we are start receiving the answers. You have two answers. Okay, four answers, great, five. One to five, five to 20, 20 to 50. Okay, great. Okay, majority of us, it looks like we know from five to 20, the vision less than, than 20. But do you know that we are here in Nova Scotia, Hundred of beaches, hundred. Uh, now in the research that I'm doing in Dalhousie University, because I'm part of Dalhousie University in this moment, uh, we are doing an inventory about the beaches in Nova Scotia, and we have more than hundred with the name and with the location. And uh, we will visit in this summer. We want to visit as many as possible, but for sure more than twenty. Then if you want to know more beaches, uh, also we have a Telegram channel in which you can uh, know about the, the beaches that we are visiting. But I think this is important that uh, we start to know more about our beaches. No Scotia, uh, I include this, uh, this slide that has two purposes. First of all is that uh, the Nova Scotia tourism the Department of uh, Cultural Communities and Tourism uh, are divided the province in seven uh, regions. We, the, these seven regions are the regions in which the, normally the, the tourism is organized. We have the Halifax Metro, South Shore, Yarmouth and Acadian Shores, Bay of Fundy and Annapolis Valley, North Umberland Shore, Cape Shore, Cape Breton Shore, and the Eastern Shore. These are the seven tourism regions. But what also is important, one of the first things that I discovered when I came here for the first time uh, nine years ago, uh, and I was very, very surprised and greatly surprised, was that Nova Scotia and the, the plate in the car say that Canada Social Playground. And it's very nice slogan, very nice slogan because it speak about the, the feeling of the Nova Scotia with the, with the ocean, with that because the ocean is part of Nova Scotia, but also it should be part of uh, all Canadians. Uh, but when we say a playground is because we feel uh, these good vibes, you know, the, the good sensations that we, when we, when the, the Canadians come here, come here to, to Nova Scotia. And I think this is why the, this is the slogan of the province. And many, many years ago, I discovered some plates on the internet uh, uh, from the, 70s. I mean, that is not a new thing. It's a very, very old slogan. And uh, this is also important because we were speaking about how to include these tourism uh, regions uh, and how to protect the, the coast because finally Nova Scotia is 95% coast. But okay, if when you go to the beach, which is your favorite activity when you go to the beach? Write all your favorite activities walking, swimming, uh, some baiting, uh, surfing, which are your favorite activities? 
and where I start to see the answers. Which is your favorite activity when you go to the beach? Okay, we have three answers now, four answers, five. Okay, we start to see which are the answers. Okay. Which are your answers? Swimming, 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 walking, enjoy the location, sunbathing, swimming, reading, yoga, relaxing, spending time with pets, great. Beer washing, collecting clams. Wow, first swimming, even if we have here in Nova Scotia quite cold water, except in Northumberland shore, I think swimming is a good, very, uh, very common activity. I really like this idea for reading, relaxing, and beer watching. But one interesting thing is that normally we don't go to the beach for uh, researching or for working. In my, in my case, uh, I would say that I go to the beach for working. This is my, 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 my work normally. But why that is important? because uh, we can go to the beach for many different things. Now, the, uh, the exercise, the idea is that we say, how familiar are you with this term? You never tried the sun, sea, and sun tourism, for example, or you're a big fan. The idea that you move from, a one, from the, the left to the right, this is a, from one to 10, how familiar are you with C, with, with the term, you know, with, the, the, with, this, uh, with this world? Sun, sea, and sun tourism, beach resort, citizen science. Have you heard before about citizen science, about ecotourism, about scientific tourism, about coastal monitoring? Okay, we have the first vote. Remember, you should include the your vote right in front. The left is you never try it. The right is you are a big fan of this activity, this kind of uh, activity. Okay, we have here five votes. And it looks like the beef resort and the coastal monitoring. Coastal monitoring has the the, the biggest uh, value biggest vote. Okay, nobody changed with a new vote. This is very interesting because when you vote, it changed everything. But now is the citizen science. Oh, great, great that you know about citizen science because we will be speaking about that. Also about coastal monitoring. And sun, sea and sun tourism. This is the most popular uh, typology of tourism around the world is when you go uh, I think uh, that you like to go to the beach in the Caribbean or in the Southeast Asia uh, with these uh, warm waters. The, this kind of massive uh, tourism of the beach is normally called sun, sea, and sun tourism. Great, but now we know that citizen sign and coastal monitoring are the two most uh, common uh, terms for you. Okay. Uh, we will continue with this uh, with this statement that I really like. We protect what we care about, and we care about about what we know. And this is a pathway for environment for environment protection, for environmental protection. Why? Normally, we try to protect with uh, many different kind of instrument, many different kind of ways. Uh, the most common is in environmental protection is that we declare some area as a park, as a protected area. Normally, when we're speaking about the ocean, we say marine protected, protected area. Uh, however, this is a legal tool, this is a legal, a legal instrument. And it's important, it's important, but it, we don't know exactly how the, the sea, the ocean is, is working. 
uh, which are the different phenomena that are, are there on the in this part in this marine protected area, maybe we pro we we will re respect the protection, but won't be exactly the same as that if we really know the, the, the place. This is an example. Please choose two animals for protection. We have here four animals. I just choose these four animals, a moose, a parrot, a beaver, and a frog. Please choose two of them. Choose two of them and send by the phone. Oh, you can choose just one of them. Okay. Okay, the moose, the frog, the moose. Okay, mm, the frog, I just have a competition between them. <laughs> okay, the frog. What happened with uh, the with these kind of uh, decisions that normally we try to protect the animal that we know more? You know, then for example, the moose are here, it's a, a, an animal very common here in Nova Scotia and generally in, in, in Canada, uh, but it's not very common that we can see one of them, but we know a lot about, about uh, the moose. Even the, the hockey uh, team here in, in Halifax, and the moose uh, is very with the moose, then it's, it's, we really know about that. The frogs, I think uh, every of us, someday we knew about a frog. Then this is why we want to protect them. And uh, the idea is that if we know more about an animal or we know more about the cause, we know more about any different uh, element, we will try to protect more. And this is exactly the idea with scientific tourism what is and what is not scientific tourism. I know that it's not a very uh, familiar term for you. This is why I asked you before, because I, I want to contextualize also to know uh, your feedback. And uh, first, uh, scientific tourism is a new typology. You know, it's, it's a, a very, very recent uh, typology in which the main, uh, the, the main traveler motivation is to participate in activities Link it to the generation scientific knowledge, but within a framework of leisure and recreation. What it, does it mean? That scientific tourism is that you are, as a tourist, you are not living in the place. You, a tourist normally is a person that go for, uh, they, they travel from their home uh, cities or home location to another location uh, uh, temporarily. It means that it's not that it's migrating, it's just traveling. It's, and it, this is uh, the way we call the, a tourist. But in the, in the scientific tourism, the, the different with other kind of typologies of tourism is that the traveler motivation is to participate in, in activities related with scientific knowledge. But what is not, because normally we, we can, confused with other uh, kind of typologies. For example, if we go uh, for a place for uh, beer washing, for example, this is all for marine mammal, for example, with whales. This is not exactly scientific tourism. This, is, this will be uh, ecotourism, ecotourism or nature-based tourism, because the motivation is only observation. We just want to uh, watch the birds, watch the mammals, the marine mammals, the whales, the dolphins, but our interest is not related with the science, with, with uh, obtaining data, with the generation of scientific knowledge. What is not a scientific tourism also, the travelers uh, who go, go to a place to learn something. Could be a historical, cultural, natural, economic, or social uh, knowledge, but it's just to learn. It's not to participate, it's not an active uh, generation of knowledge. It, we uh, could call that educational tourism. For example, we, we go to the museum or maybe we go for a, for a beach, but the idea to go uh, to the beach because somebody will explain us something, but we are not part of the scientific uh, activity. Uh, or uh, another thing that is not, and it really is not a uh, scientific tourism is when the scientists traveling to events or field trips. 
this is not tourism at all. This is, this is even not tourism. When our biology go to the to the forest or go to the beach or go to the mountain for collecting the samples, they, they, they are not really uh, traveling. They are working. Uh, and this is important to know what is exactly scientific tourism because uh, I will propose you at the at the end of the webinar at, at, the, at the not the end but at the middle of the webinar uh, conversation about scientific tourism. But the other term that you know more is the uh, citizen science. And uh, what is exactly a citizen science? Is a collaboration between scientists and the rest of society. There are many different definitions about citizen science, but uh, I'm working now with a colleague in Argentina. Uh, she has a very, very nice project with many communities uh, in the south part of the Buenos Aires province there in Argentina. And uh, she liked and she proposed me this, this definition uh, in which the collaboration is the most important thing. If we have in one side the, the, the society, the community, the citizens, and in the other side, we have the scientists. And this collaboration is seen as a two-way activity. It's not the, as educational uh, activity in which the scientists go to the community to explain something, and that's all, not. The idea is that at the beginning, normally the scientists, the researchers go to the community, explain about the, uh, the research project, the science, the phenomena, but after that, the citizens start to obtain information and to interact with scientists. Uh, it, it will allow citizens to play a role in the research activity and as a result, produce improvements and discovery that will be beneficial to society as a whole. It means that with the citizen science, the purpose is not just to publish a paper, it's not just to uh, advance a scientific project with some kind of grant. The idea is that the information that is generated in this project will be uh, for the for everybody and will be for uh, improvement of everybody uh, uh, situation. But now maybe we can uh, have some kind of uh, doubts about which is the difference really in between scientific tourism and citizen science because it could be quite fun, quite similar, you know? Uh, okay, first thing is, uh, as you can see on, on the, in the headings, the science, scientific, scientists are the, the, the middle, both uh, concepts. And the difference is who is uh, doing uh, science, scientific activities with scientists, with researchers. In scientific tourism are tourists, they are the, the persons, the, the people who are interacting with scientists and in citizen science are the citizens, the, lo the local community, uh, the people that are living uh, in the place or close to the place and then nearby the, the location in which the scientists go for, uh, for doing their research. Uh, it could be any kind of researching, it could be uh, uh, ec ecology or geography, economy, uh, anthropology, any kind of uh, resource could be uh, uh, could be done with the citizens or also with tourists. Uh, but scientific tourism is a very new typology. But which are the difference? First, in, the, in scientific tourism, the data is gathered once per person. Why? Because the tourists go to the place, help or participate in the scientific activity. But uh, after the activity, they go back to their home then normally they uh, gather the, the data just once. Uh, also in the, the tourists, the participants pay for research. And this is very interesting because this at the end is tourism and tourism is an, acti an economic activity. It's a geographical phenomenon, a geographical process, but also it's economic activity. And it means that the people would pay to be part. And this is great. This is great because it means that it will be a tourism with a purpose. Because it's not that I, I go for a place uh, just to enjoy the place, and uh, I don't care about the, the place in which I, uh, I am. No, this is totally different. I go for a place and I will pay for an experience, but this uh, money will help to have more science. 
and this is great. Also, the scientific guides are needed for leading the whole activities because uh, the tourists, they don't know about the, normally these tourists, they, they uh, don't are, they, they are not uh, scientists, normally they are just tourists. Then they need a scientific guide, a researcher uh, who leads the activity and explain about how to obtain the data, which it means the, the, the data and why it's important, etc. It, it means that also it will need a very quick training of participants because the tourists, they will, they, most probably they don't know anything about the, the research, about the parameters, they don't know anything about the topic. Uh, then they need to be trained, but we don't have a month for training a tourist, at least a, a, a half an hour, an hour. Then we need to create a very quick and effective training for participants just that, uh, with enough, enough that they can uh, implement the, the data collection. And also, and of course, methods are very simple and inaccurate. Why? Because they don't have a, a lot of training. Uh, however, the, the method is inaccurate, but it doesn't mean that it's not, uh, it's not good, not good information. Uh, normally, uh, when we are researching, uh, we like to, or we prefer to have accurate uh, data, but it's better to have thousand uh, data of one phenomenon inaccurate that have just one or two uh, very accurate data, because uh, with, we, when we have a lot of data, we can uh, do some statistical uh, treatment with the idea to increase the, the accuracy. Then this is why it's important scientific tourism. But okay, go to the other side, to the citizen side. Uh, first, the data is gathered multiple times per same person. Why? Because uh, the citizen science is doing with the people that is living on, in the place. And, and, uh, and because the people living on this place, they can go uh, often to the same place to obtain the data. And it means that the particip participants donate their time for researching. They, they are not paying, different to tourists, that tourists pay for the experience, uh, the uh, citizens of the local community, they are not paying, but they are donating their time. Now, this is very important uh, that they have this, uh, this donation because one of the big problems with uh, to obtain data, at least in coastal area, that is my, my expertise, is that, for example, in Nova Scotia, we have more than 8,000 uh, kilometers of coastline. And it's very, very difficult that the province or any uh, organization has enough people to go to all the beaches, for example, monthly to obtain the information. But if we have uh, the local community training to go uh, monthly to obtain this information, okay, it will be great. But we need that the people donate their, their time. Uh, of course, it, it means that uh, these citizens, they will be complete training. They will uh, receive a complete training uh, to understand very, very well about the different parameters, the methods, uh, how to collect the data, because they will be alone, alone, I, I, I mean, uh, without any scientific guide, different to tour scientific tourism, they will be alone. Uh, each month when they go to the beach to uh, obtain this data. And also the research topic uh, normally uh, uh, related to the concerns of the community, because of course, if I'm living close to the beach, I would like to know more about the beach and I will know more uh, about the beach that, for example, the mountain of if the, uh, it, it is, is, for example, if we're here in Nova Scotia, we say that we will try to uh, analyze a species that is not here in the province, but it what makes really sense. Then now, it, and this is the really the the motivation to do this uh, this uh, interactive webinar, and is that how can we help to monitor or to protect Nova Scotian coasts? because we need to pass from the intention to the action. Uh, normally, uh, I know now that I'm here in Nova Scotia that majority, most of the people are, uh, 
aware about that we need to protect coast and uh, the coast uh, is very important for the province. Of course, but we need to, to do something. And again, we use the same uh, statement that we need to know and when we know, we can care about and when we care, we can protect. Especially because I like to say that it, it, this is my, my perception as uh, somebody that uh, come from, uh, came from abroad, uh, is that Nova Scotia looks like an island attached to the continent. You know, it's, it's very, very close to an island. It's totally surrounded by, by the ocean. Then we need to really uh, monitor these uh, more than 8,000 kilometers of coast. And this is the idea that why we want from the uh, North Coast Environmental Network to call uh, for you and that we can do something together. Then we will go again to the Menti, to our phone. And I want to ask you, which kind of coastal monitoring parameters do you know? If you are familiar with ecosystem parameters, with geomorphological parameters, oceanographic parameters, human impact parameters, Choose one of them and please vote. Okay. Five votes and oh, huge majority know more about the human impact. Okay, we have now more votes, nine votes. Great. Thank you for your voting. Uh, okay. Uh, two third parts. Of us, we say that we are more familiar with the human impact uh, parameters. Ecosystem uh, is, is very important. It's about the, the, the ecology and the species. Uh, geomorphological uh, also is, is important. It's about the dunes, about the cliff, about the uh, how we can how we see the, the, the coast and the oceanographics about the waves, the currents, etc. Okay. And why this is important. And uh, this will be the, the last three slides before we go for speaking together. Uh, and the idea is that I, I have three ideas that I want to share with you. I will explain you very briefly about the ideas. Two of them are related with scientific tourism and the other is related with uh, citizen science. Uh, I call them idea because uh, we, uh, when I, I was in, in Colombia, in my home country, uh, three years ago. We started thinking about scientific tourism and try to, uh, to implement this kind of tourism because we discovered that in remote beaches, especially, it was very difficult to obtain data. Uh, it would be nice if the tourists, they want to go to the beach to, for, for helping us to obtain data. And after that, we uh, prepared two different kinds of activities to different kind of experience or, or tourist products. Uh, first of them is the scientific tourism on beaches. Uh, these are, just yeah, on the screen, you can see two different uh, kind of activities of the same product. Uh, one is the uh, scientific spring oceanographic data in which uh, this is, uh, I just translate from the original in Spanish uh, with the material that we promote the activity. And we say, okay, in this practice, you will learn to take oceanographic data using simple methodologies. You will measure the height, period, and direction of waves, and also the speed and duration of currents. You will also learn the importance of continuous monitoring this information. This is the thing that we offer to the tourists. We will say that they will learn and they will also participate in this measurement. As you can see there in the, on the pictures, they are on the beach. They, all of them are tourists. No one of them is a, a scientist, a researcher, or even a, an oceanographer. But they will learn and they will uh, participate in this activity. Normally, this uh, pack uh, include uh, the use of the measure, uh, measuring equipment, very simple, as you can see on the pictures, explanation of the marine phenomena, the a natural snack, the idea that the people can eat something during the activity will be a four hour activity uh, and they will be certified as a scientific tourist. 
This is one of the things that we will give them um, a micro accreditation to say that they are now scientific tourists. And also a lot of fun and learning uh, guaranteed because this is a tourism activity. They are not working, they are traveling, they are uh, on vacation. Then they want to have fun, but okay, also we can have fun doing science, why not? Uh, you can live this experience in urban, uh, uh, remote uh, village beaches and beach resorts. Uh, it will be four hours and it will cost more or less $60 per person. This is just a, a general cost, just with the idea that you have uh, 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 some, some number in your mind, but it will depend of the activity, it will depend of the equipment, it will depend of the scientific guide, and it will depend of the different, the, the country, even the province. The similar, oh, I didn't translate the, the second one, sorry, but the second one is about the beach profile. And this beach profile uh, is that, as you can see on the pictures, uh, is a very simple method in which you can uh, measure the most important parameter for geomorphology. Uh, maybe you remember with uh, the news uh, here in the Atlantic uh, province was that, that after Fiona that many, many beaches was eroded. Many beaches almost disappeared. But how can we know if, if the beach really disappeared uh, different for the previous uh, hurricanes or previous uh, storms? We need to have this information, previous information. This is why it's important the coastal monitoring. And with this method, it's a very simple, but a very accurate method. This is not really an accurate, it's a, a very accurate method. And it's, uh, it costs no more than $60 just the, the, to create, to construct, to do the method. And in less than half hour, you learn how to measure the beach profile. And in another half hour, and with a lot of fun, you can go to the beach and measure the beach profile. And this information will be very helpful, helpful for uh, scientists and also for the uh, government uh, agency uh, to, uh, to know about the state of the course. This is one idea. Imagine that we start to create this kind of we are just starting the summer. In some weeks, we will be in summer. And imagine that you will go for vacation to some beach here, for example, in Cape Breton, close to Cass, uh, for measure a uh, beach there. This will be your, your vacation plan. Do you like it or not? This is the first idea. Please keep in mind. Second idea that I want to share with you is a, uh, also scientific tourism, but it will be a scientific beach trip. Imagine that we go uh, to the beach, but for a resort during five days, uh, and uh, we will be in activity. This picture also uh, in Colombia, in the uh, Caribbean, we have also, the, as Canada, we have uh, access to uh, more than one uh, ocean. We have to the Caribbean Sea and to the Pacific. And it was in the Caribbean part. And we were in activity in which the first day will be the first contact with the beach and the scientific guide explain the general coastal fissures and explain the activity for the next days. And we will be in, in, a, in a hotel and the second day we access to the beach, walking or by boat and receive the scientific tourist kit and take the first marine data of litter, vegetation and landscape. Uh, the third day, we visit the beach to measure waves, currents, and profiles, also take some sand samples that will be analyzed in the hotel. The day four, uh, from very early on, I, we will do a walking tour. Begins, uh, uh, we, will do, we will begin a walking tour along several kilometers of coastline. It's like an expedition. And uh, each coastal fissure is interpreted uh, with respect to the effects of human activity means that we will be walking and explaining directly to the coast each of these uh, fissures of this phenomenon. And the last day, uh, but before, the night before, uh, the participant will receive their credential as scientific tourists. Then as they can say when they go home that they are uh, now officially scientific tourists. This is very great for uh, tourists, for the people. They will feel very proud about that. And also uh, they would say goodbye to the beach, but the perception of them about the, the beach surely is different. 
for sure is different because it's not the same to go to the beach just to see waves and to walk on the, on the sun uh, is totally different when you really understand which is the move why the, 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 the world is moving, uh, which is exactly the, the current, uh, uh, which are the, the waves, which are the duration, the, he the height, the, the waves. Normally, this package includes uh, the boat transfer to remote beach, the meals, the accommodations, the permanent accompaniment of a scientific uh, tourist, uh, scientific guide, sorry. Also, scientific activities on remote beaches, uh, at, even at the shear with as a scientific tourist, as you can see on the picture, uh, all of them, they have the same uh, shear. Uh, this uh, is because the idea that they feel really as, as a scientific tourist and they will certify and also travel insurance. And the, the guide, the scientific guide will be a, a, a researcher. In this case, I was the, the scientific guide, you can see on the picture, uh, but the idea is that always will be, it's not a tourist guide, it's a scientific guide. This is the second idea. Imagine that we can have this kind of activity, for example, in the Eastern Shore. I would like to have this kind of a beach trip to the, to the Eastern Shore, isn't it? Don't you, do, 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 don't you like uh, to go, for example, to Cape Breton uh, during five days just to walk on the beach and to learn and also to obtain some data to protect the Cape Breton coast? I think it would be nice. And the third idea, the final idea, uh, we will uh, just uh, start for uh, a conversation, is that imagine, and we are working, I'm very happy that uh, Marianne is here from the Diocese and Environment Network, uh, because uh, we are speaking about, try to create this idea. This is an, uh, an idea uh, uh, developing, and is the idea to create a citizen coastal monitoring network. Imagine that we have here in Nova Scotia, uh, different local uh, communities uh, close to the coast. And this was, uh, uh, all of these uh, group of local communities are trained for monitoring coastal parameters. Then they will go there and we have the groups, four or five uh, people, and we will train them about what is the, what is and how to measure the, the waves, the currents, the dunes, the uh, vegetation, also some uh, fauna uh, about the human impacts. And after that, the idea is that monthly these local monitors be seen one or more beaches for measuring these parameters. This is the idea of this citizen coastal monitoring network. And the local monitors use a mobile application for collecting data and send it to a data hub. Mean that they don't need to to uh, to write any information and say it by post, not uh, in the 21st century, we are always connected by a phone. Then they will use a just simply a mobile application and they will send, where they will send the, uh, the, the data they gather each month for a, say, uh, a data hub. And this data hub that could be placed in any part of the province, it will depend uh, who create the, the, the network, but in any, place, there will be this data hub. And this data hub uh, should have one or more scientists because the, the mission of them is to download this data uh, that they will receive from the each local group. Now, for example, in the, in the slide, we have 12 different uh, local groups. It means that each month will be 12 uh, uh, data packs, 12, uh, different uh, groups of data from different beaches in the different parts of the province. Then the scientists, they need to download this data. And of course, it's not just to download and organize the information. It's also the, with the idea that the researchers, they can prepare monitoring reports. Uh, and these monitoring reports will be a very nice and very important uh, input for governmental agencies, for example, the uh, the part here in Nova Scotia, the Department of uh, uh, Resources, Natural Resources of the Department of uh, Climate Change and Environment, they, surely they will be interested in this information, but also some private organizations, for example, with a CIPO that uh, they, they are very active protecting uh, the, the coast, protecting the, 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 the wild areas here in, in the province all around Canada. 
uh, but suppose uh, here in Nova Scotia, for example, the Mabu Beach, maybe you remember for sure, you know about this very uh, important activity that they do, they did uh, with the with this beach. Uh, and surely they will be happy to have this information because they can uh, improve their uh, activities. And of course, for local communities, it's very important that the local communities they have the first access free and first access to the reports because they are living from uh, front to the coast. They are uh, the people who are uh, enjoying, but also caring about and also protecting the coast. And they should know uh, the, the reports. And of course, uh, periodically, the local groups uh, should be training again because will be new coastal parameters or will be some updates. Uh, about the methods or about the, the way in which they will uh, send the data, etc. And uh, the idea that it could be uh, forever because uh, if we have uh, local communities uh, with commitment about the for monitoring and they donate their time, it will be in this case, for example, will be a uh, half a day for a month just for protecting cops. I think it's not a lot. And they will know about the, the information. They will uh, obtain this training. And everybody will, uh, will be uh, happy with all this information. This is the third idea. I'll just go back briefly. And we will start with speaking. First idea, scientific tourism on beaches, especially in urban beaches, one day activity, half day activity for tourists. Second idea about scientific beach trip, five days activity as a tour. And her idea, a citizen coastal monitoring network with the different uh, local communities here in Nova Scotia. Then uh, it's time for collaborative ideas. Then, uh, Cass, if uh, you, know, you can help me with the instructions. Yeah, so um, we are going to assign you guys to breakout rooms. How many? So we've got 12 participants. Take away you and me, Camilla, we have 10. So I know you wanted to do five groups. Is that still you? what you wanted to do or? Yeah, I think two groups is fine. Two groups, okay. Yeah. So I will place you guys into the breakout rooms. Um, and then you guys are free to choose whatever proposed idea that Camillo mentioned that most spoke to your group. So it might be the one day activity, the five day, or maybe it's the network, um, but you can choose that amongst yourselves and then discuss the pros and cons of each. And then we'll come back to the main room and we'll do some sharing. Um, so just give me a minute and I'll get, get you guys into your rooms. Yeah, thank you, Casa. While you are uh, creating the, the the rooms, it's very important that you start uh, just first choosing the 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 idea, the proposal that you want, and to choose one person that will present the pros and cons that you discuss during this uh, fifteen minutes uh, session. <laughs> 